everyone, it's Hayes, and in today's video we're going to do the commentary slash analysis for episode 7? Episode 7 of Miraculous Ladybug Season 5, Passion. And before I start, I'm about to spoil the whole episode for you, and I would usually say I will leave some links below where you can go and watch it, but um, on productions or on entertainment, whatever they're called, I'm making it increasingly difficult to find the episodes, so um, I don't know. I don't have any answers for you. I watched it live on TF1 with a VPN. That's how I watch, usually watch the episodes. So yeah, um, and my other disclaimer is um, please don't talk about any of the Bible spoilers or the leaks in general underneath this video. I haven't read the show Bible and I haven't seen really any of the leaks. And most people watch my videos because they also <laughs> don't want to know about them. So um, that's why I'm here to have a leak free experience of the show. So if I make a comment that speculates about a future episode, please don't tell me if I'm right or wrong or what will happen instead. I just don't want to know. So if you can't leave a comment that doesn't spoil something about the show, I just um, rather you didn't leave one at all. Okay, so this episode, I would give it overall an 8 out of 10. I'm going to go into why it's an 8 out of 10 in just a minute because the whole reason why it's an 8 out of 10 happens at the start of the episode basically. But I did think it was a good episode, I thought it was a great episode for Adrian. This was definitely an Adrian episode, whilst there were like a lot of scenes with Marinette. I think it was like a fairly good balance between them. I like more episodes like this. To me, Adrian was the one who was very much leading the episode. Um, so I thought it was a great episode for him and his development, particularly where Gabriel and Natalie are concerned. And oh my god, this, ep like, this episode had everything. Had Gabe Nath, had Adrian, had Lady Noir, it had Kwame interaction. You all know I love when Tiki and Plague talk to each other because they hardly ever get to. I, I, this episode just had so many good qualities. Only the only really like bad thing, and it's not even that bad, it's just more of my perception of it really. The only like thing I have to talk about is in the opening. So let's get into that. So, right. So, first of all, so you all know I've said, I think, since from about multiplication airing that I wasn't 100% convinced that Adrian had feelings for Marinette. Like I felt like we needed it showing a bit more, showing a bit more of Adrian's like thought process and what Marinette had actually done to make him fall in love with her sort of whatever. Um, I didn't quite believe it but in determination I believed it a lot more due to the events of that episode and also in determination I did really start to believe that Marinette was falling in love with Cat Noir. However, the opening of this episode, for both Marinette and for Adrian, they both do kind of make it sound like, so with Marinette at first, it first of all sounds like she's trying to convince Alia that she's in love with Count Noir and not Adrian now. But in like, secondary to that, it also kind of sounds like she's trying to convince herself. Like, don't get me wrong, I did believe her, like when they were talking about it, she was blushing, but she kept blushing when they changed the topic to Adrian, so it kind of seemed like she does still have feelings for Adrian, which I, I do kind of feel like she does, to be honest. So to me, it kind of sounded like she was trying to convince herself and she was kind of doing it because she knows, or she knew, I don't think she's realised quite yet that Cat Noir isn't in love with Ladybug anymore, but it kind of sounded like from some of the things she said, maybe I just translated it wrong, but she was kind of like he's in love with Ladybug so therefore I should go for it and like she talks about him being the safe option and even at the end of the episode she's like oh this is so much better than being in love with Adrian because I can actually talk to Cat Noir. So it kind of just seems like she's going for a, the second best option. Obviously we all know they're the same people but to me it just sounded the same. Same with Adrian in the following scene. So yeah it's really sweet how he wakes up he's like oh Marinette, Marinette, he keeps saying her name but then when Plague interjects he's like hey what about Ladybug and Adrian's like oh well she doesn't love me so I'll go for Marinette who I know or knew whatever um who I know does have feelings for me. So it's just it seems like they're treating the other person like the second option because their first option didn't love them. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? <laughs> like I do believe that Marinette is falling in love with Cat Noir and I do believe that Adrian is falling in love with Marinette, but I just felt like the phrasing of those two opening scenes for them was just so odd because it made it sound like the other person was just like their second option. It's like, oh well, they don't love me, so I'll go for the person who I know is in love with me and I've got some mild feelings for them. Does that make sense? Like, I did think it was cute and all getting to see them talk about the other person they liked. Like, Marinette was so cute talking about Cat Noir and how, like, handsome and cool she thinks he is. And then the same with Adrian's like, oh, Marinette's amazing and stuff like that. So it was really cute, but at the same time it was a bit like, 
Mm, sounds like you're both trying to convince yourselves you're in love with this other person because the other person you wanted doesn't want you. So does that, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I was a bit like, oh, that sounds a bit mean. But anyway, the next scene, oh my God, with Gabriel and Adrian, right? As much as I, I hate Gabriel, obviously he's a terrible person. I always love scenes where Gabriel and Adrian get these more like candid moments together. I just think it's so sweet. Plus as well, so obviously I watched it in French. So when they're talking, Adrian calls his father Père, which is like father, and then he changes it to Papa, which I think is more like dad, which was so sweet. And then Gabriel smiling after it. <laughs> so, 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 so cute. I love that. So I hate Gabriel, but I absolutely love these moments. And then Natalie arrives. The queen throughout this whole episode, Natalie was amazing. So she comes in, immediately tells Gabriel off. And she was like, Gabriel, if you knew your son better, you'd know he'd like his pancakes plain, obviously. So I'm like, has Natalie been making Adrian his pancakes all this time? I don't know. <laughs> and then, oh, I really, really wish. So Adrian got interrupted, he didn't get to finish his sentence. So he says, said to you, this girl, he like says, oh, I'm lost in my thoughts. This girl, he was thinking about Marinette while staring at part of his banana. Like he just sits there and stares at it. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, so he starts saying this girl and I'm gonna be so intrigued. I'm, I'm assuming at some point he's gonna tell his dad who he likes. I'm gonna be so intrigued to see what his reaction is gonna be because of the way he reacted in Cat Blank. Now, even though he doesn't remember those events, he kind of basically tried to do what happened in Cat Blank again in Ladybug because, I don't know, the man kind of seems annoyed that he hasn't been able to akumatize this 14 year old girl. He's like, he's pressed about it. He's like, I need to be able to akumatize everyone. And she is on my list as never having been akumatized before. We need to get on that. <laughs> so he seemed pretty much desperate to do it in Cat Blank and he was going to use Adrian as a way to akumatize her and then in Ladybug he used Lila to help akumatize her and which they very nearly succeeded as well. So I'm just a bit like even though he doesn't remember the events of Cat Blank but he doesn't remember the events of Ladybug if Adrian ends up telling his dad about his feelings for Marinette is Gabriel going to actually try and do something about that as in in terms of trying to akumatize her because he doesn't want them to be together because she hasn't been akumatized. I don't know, his logic is so warped. I'm like, why is he so desperate to akumatize this girl? Plus as well, Lila has kind of made Gabriel believe that Marinette is a really bad influence on Adrian. So what's that gonna mean for this father-son relationship? Obviously that's with the assumption that Adrian does obviously end up telling Gabriel who he has feelings for, but I'd be super, super, super intrigued. And then, oh my God, okay. So Natalie is still wearing the ring that Gabriel Babes gave her to her in Risk and Adrian sees it and he's like, oh my God, they're like, what? I'm not really sure what goes through his head, but he says, it's like, oh, we're like a family. Like, does he just like, does he think they're engaged? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So um, they're acting together as a nice, happy family. Gabriel offers to make Natalie some pancakes. I learned the French for pancakes this morning. Spoiler alert, it's pancake. <laughs> um, but then, Adrian leaves after this wholesome family moment to get to school and then Natalie, oh my god, an absolute queen. I was looking forward to this moment, I've been looking forward to it. As soon as I saw it in the first ever trailer we got and we saw this, I was like, oh my god, yes. And she wrestles him down to the kitchen counter and basically has a go at him for his treatment of Adrian, which we stand, we love Queen Natalie, and basically she's gonna tell him like, you need to stop this, Emily didn't want this. Also, so there's one thing I was confused about. In the translation, the way I translated it, Natalie basically said, like this was a literal translation, that she was a magic item hunter. And then we find out in the next scene that she was like an antiquities hunter. And like, honestly, the whole time I was watching it, I was like, did Natalie used to be Tomb Raider? Was Natalie the miraculous universe version of Lara Croft? <laughs> That's basically the vibes I got from Natalie, which is great. So I was like, magic item hunter, is that basically what she used to be kind of like? Lara Croft basically. Um, so that was a bit of an odd translation but I guess it made sense when we got to the rest of the episodes. I was like all right but then Gabriel was like if we don't carry on then Adrian's gonna be all alone and I was like why don't you just stop because I mean he only like because Gabriel rolled up his sleeve didn't need to show the cataclysm. He um I don't know maybe it has spread I can't remember what it looked like in destruction but he seems largely fine. So if that's happened to you, and like Natalie says, like Emily accepted that this was the end and that she didn't want you to carry on and try and save her. So Emily accepted that. So I don't, I guess I just don't understand why Gabriel hasn't moved on. I guess, I don't, 
No, like, I'm not saying it's easy. I know it's not easy. But I am just a bit like, why? Like, you've seen all the destruction devastation you've caused. Even though he doesn't know that Catwise is Southern, he has no idea who Ladybug is, he must realise, like, the mental toll it's having on these two teenagers, not to mention the rest of Paris. Plus the physical toll it's taken on him and on Natalie now. Like, isn't that communicating to you? You need to stop. If you want your son to be okay, and like you say you're doing all this for him, if you want him to be okay, don't you think you should stop? The man's logic, I don't understand him, don't understand him. Anyway, and then Adrian, next scene, he's like, I should get Marinette a ring. Okay, <laughs> I understand the inspiration behind it. And maybe it would be cute for him to give her like a promise ring, that would be really cute. But he's like, oh, my dad and Natalie, they're engaged. We should, we should totally go for it. I still don't understand to this day why Gabriel put that ring on Natalie's left ring, ring finger. I wear this ring that you probably see most of the time in my videos on my right ring finger because I'm not engaged. The same way Cat Noir wears his ring also on his right ring finger because he's not engaged or married or whatever. So why did Gabriel put it on the left hand? The engaged married finger. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand this logic either. But I did think it was really cute. Honestly, because of like the way Adrian and Marinette are after identity reveal, I 100% could see them like getting promise rings for each other. That'd be absolutely adorable. So then we move on to the scene with Natalie and Emily. And Natalie says something very interesting. And she was basically like, I'm gonna get the Miraculouses back from him. And I was a bit like, Okay, did that mean like she's gonna betray Gabriel because I had wondered if she was gonna because the alliance rings with the way they seemingly work I know we're never gonna get a proper explanation for it because it, it wouldn't work in the real life And I've said before it's gonna be really difficult for Adrian and Marinette to work out how these um, Akumas are happening with like this extra miraculous power Because they don't have miraculous on them Like I feel like at some point they will reach the conclusion that oh everyone who's been Akumatized was wearing an alliance ring I feel like they'll get there eventually, but it doesn't really offer them concrete proof of what exactly is happening. I feel like they're gonna need help from the inside to take down Gabriel once and for all and that person is obviously Natalie. Like I don't see there's gonna be any reason why Kagami's mum, who obviously seems to be on it as well, I don't see any reason why she would at any point betray Gabriel but I do think Natalie has great reasoning for betraying him because of how much she wants to protect Adrian and put a stop to this. So I think that's going to be super interesting, but then, oh my god, okay, so Adrian comes in the room and we kind of see like these flashbacks to, I would assume, them in Tibet, like, we know that's where they found the peacock and butterfly miraculous, obviously it's where the temple was, but the photo in her room didn't look like the same Tibet shown in the show. Now, I've never been to Tibet, nor do I know much about it, but in the show, Tibet is always seem to be quite snowy, which I think that's what Tibet is like anyway, but some of the photos they had up was them in like, look kind of like a jungle rainforest kind of place so either I guess that could have been on the way to Tibet but it also kind of seemed like that Natalie had had these other adventures with Emily and Gabriel it's just really interesting to find out more about it so it from what we know I'm pretty sure Thomas Astrick has said Natalie met them at university but then it seems it went on that Natalie went on to be like some sort of antiquities hunter like Lara Croft basically um but when maybe Emily started to fall ill from using the Peacock Miraculous, Natalie came in as like an old friend to help take care of Adrian and then has along the way wound up being Gabriel's assistant. Um, it seems like a bit of a strange life, but I really want to find out more. I just really, I feel like, like Natalie is one of my top favourite characters. Not my absolute favourite, but she's definitely up there. But I feel like she's definitely the best written character. I find her so intriguing. She goes through the most emotions. Honestly, I would even dare to say she's had the most character development in this whole show. Um, I just love her so much. I want to find out more about her. But then she was like, oh, Gabriel. She didn't say this, but it was basically hinted out that Gabriel was her first love. Kill me now. <laughs> and then the Adrian, oh, Adrian was just so sweet to Marinette in that scene. Amazing. And then Tiki and Plague, who apparently learned nothing just out in the open in the art room okay but I kind of feel like I mean I had previously theorized that that scene was from Kwame's choice it feels like that scene is gonna like it feels like that scene is like the initial catalyst for what happens in Kwame's choice that they take the miraculouses back because the owners are in love but can't be together which 
is so sad. <laughs> but now let's move on to talking about the Kumatization and the Akuma fights. So I thought the whole fight in general was absolutely amazing, but right before it starts, Natalie wasn't akumatized, so how did she communicate with Moloch? Can you do it through the rings? You know, she had like the butterfly or whatever on her face, but she wasn't actually akumatized, so how did that work? I don't, I don't know. And then as soon as everyone finds out about the akumatization in class, Marinette runs to the toilet and she's like, yeah, I get to see Kat Noir again. She was so cute throughout this whole fight. So she basically kind of asked Kat Noir on a date to the cinema and he's like, are you crazy now? <laughs> like, I really like how their roles seemingly have completely reversed in all of this where Ladybug is acting kind of like kind of more goofy a bit marinette like around Cat Noir now like even when she was Lady Noir a bit later on because Mr. Bug's a bit like is this like Plague's effect on you is he making you act cheeky because some of the stuff she was saying like she was like oh don't hurt his face um then she said to Nestle I'm the only one who can run after him she was being kind of a bit Cat Noir like but also kind of marinette like around Mr. Bug. Oh, she was hilarious. She was great in the episode. And, oh my god, the sewer scene, so cute. I absolutely, Cat Noir was amazing in this episode. Adrian was amazing. Going to save the day. I did feel bad for him though. So when he's running with Ladybug, he's like, oh, she was here. I was like, well, she was there, but you know what I mean? Like if she could speak, she'd be the one thinking of the plan, but she's not. I'm the only one here and I'm a stupid cat. And I was like, no, you're not a stupid cat nearly killed me and just in general Adrian was so sweet as well because when he had both of the miraculouses he was like can't we make a wish and make one not go away and make the whole world just better in general he is lovely no one in this show deserves that ball of sunshine I just want to hug him and keep him locked away from everything safe Marinette as well they both deserve the world after everything they've been through. I just, I hate seeing either of them cry, more so Marinette. But yeah, either of them upset just kills me inside basically. And then, oh my God, the ending of the Akuma fight. So they return Natalie or whatever. Also, why was Gabriel looking suspiciously at Lady Noir's ring? Like he didn't seem to look that way at Mr. Bug only at Lady Noir. Was it just because it was flashing and he was like hoping he could make her stay and so she had to de-transform in front of them? I was a bit like, why are you... what's with this fascination? Because he didn't look at Mr. Bug that way, only her. So I was a bit weirded out by that, but I was like, huh, okay. Um, but anyway, so after that, um, they're on top of the truck Dero, I think. I'm not actually sure what it's called. Um, <laughs> and uh, Mr. Bug's like, hey, wait, aren't you forgetting something? And she's like, oh, a kiss? And I was just like, Marinette, calm down. <laughs> it was so funny though. She was great. I love the little scene with her and Alia after was catching up on it because to me, Alia just doesn't look convinced that Marinette likes Cat Noir as much as she's saying is. And whilst I think it's cute, that Marinette likes Cat Noir. Um, I'm also not convinced personally. So yeah, that's my take on that. But the end scene with Natalie and Adrian was super cute as well. I am intrigued to see what love advice Natalie is gonna offer our boy. <laughs> I am excited to see where it's gonna go, but I don't feel just because of what we got from like the reunion trailer, I don't feel like there's gonna be a great deal of Love Square content in it just in general, because it looks like it's gonna be more focused on Joan of Arc and what Alex has been up to rather than Love Square, which usually I'd be like, no, we need Love Square in every episode because I love the Love Square, but um, the Love Square has been causing me an immense amount of pain at the minute. So I think an episode away from it because I feel like Illusion's gonna look at it more. An episode away from it is definitely what I need. So yeah, eight out of 10, mainly the eight out of 10 because I'm not 100% convinced that Marinette likes Cat Noir and that Adrian likes Marinette. It genuinely seems like they're trying to convince themselves that they like them because their first choice doesn't want them. So like, okay, well I'll go for the second choice because they already like me. I don't know, it, I think it was just the phrasing of it. I just really, hmm, I didn't like it. But eight out of 10, I thought it was a solid episode. Otherwise, I think there was some great development for some of the characters in this episode. MVP goes to Natalie, why? Because she's a queen. She was fabulous in this episode, even though she was the Akuma victim. Uh, and she was horrible in it. She was also lovely in it, mainly towards Adrian. The scenes with Gabriel she had were awesome as well. A uh, special mention though goes to Adrian because he was just as awesome in this episode. They are just the best together. Like, give me a spin-off show of after all this is over, Adrian and Natalie going on holiday together and just having an adventure. I don't know, like a five episode 
special spin-off series where they go on holiday to like a Tomb Raider sort of holiday. That's not really a holiday, but you know what I mean? They go and investigate some tomb somewhere and do some fun things and just have some other some bond. Oh my god, I love them so much. Okay, anyway, um, I love to know what you think of this episode, besties, and also just like a general note for this week, because we've got three days, three episodes, I will do my absolute best to reply to as many comments as possible. But if you leave me a longer comment, please go for it. If you write me an essay, just please put it in paragraphs. I have bad eyesight. But if you do write me something a bit longer, I do tend to get round to it a bit later on because I really have to you know, read and digest what you've said before I can reply back to it. Because you've put so much effort into typing such a long comment, I want to put effort and I'm replying back to you. And whilst ordinarily that wouldn't be a problem because we want to usually get one episode and then a week later I might get another one because we've got three in three days if you write me a longer comment it may take me a bit did you just fall over <laughs> it may take me a bit longer um to reply back to it so please don't think I'm ignoring any of you um the next three days well I guess two and a half days now Ooh, we got one down um it's gonna be really stressful and tiring for me so I will get to it, it just might not be immediately, but I'm really, really excited to see what you all thought. But I thought this was an amazing episode, it was really enjoyable, was not half as heartbreaking as the other episodes have been recently. <laughs> I really, really liked it. I'd love to know what you think, besties. Please don't worry if you don't agree with me. Besties don't always agree with each other, but besties always respect each other's opinions, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!